I remember watching the senior speakers as a freshman, hearing the shakiness in their voice as they share their story to the community. I remember thinking to myself, I cannot wait to do that. When the first email came about senior speeches, I ignored it. I had many excuses ready when parents or faculty members were to ask why I'm not giving one. I was a virtual student most of the year, so I told people that I did not want to give one virtually. It even worked for a while when I was back in school, but soon enough, seniors were allowed in the chapel and I was running out of excuses. It pushed me to ask myself, why was I avoiding something that I wanted to do for so long? The days went by and I still had no answer until Wednesday, April 14th. On April 14th, 1942, one of the most important people in my life was born. Gary LaPierre was born in the small town of Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts. He lived a very humble life with his family's source of income coming from teaching music to local children. At 18, he graduated high school and moved to Boston to pursue his dream career in broadcast journalism. He attended Graham Junior College where his pr professor told him he would not make it in the business. My grandfather later went on to be one of the top radio broadcast journalists in the Boston market for more than 40 years. By the time I was born, my grandfather was almost retired, but I would sit with him for hours listening to his stories about interviewing the Beatles, Muhammad Ali, and every president since John F. Kennedy. He was unapologetically himself on air and was most known for La Pierre on the Loose, where he was able to transition from objective news stories to his personal opinion on current issues. Amongst his many stories, I would share my own of the times I was given the chance to speak publicly. During one of our family dinners, I shared about how moving one of the senior speeches was in chapel that day. I confidently said that I would like to give a speech one day, and I watched his eyes light up. We talked at length about what message I wanted to leave my audience with. I always imagined myself practicing my speech with him weeks before and having him sit front row as I delivered my message to the school. It never crossed my mind that he would not be there for this important day. In December of 2018, my grandfather was diagnosed with leukemia and passed away three short months later at the age of 76. It was a reality no one expected um, and one that my family is processing two years later. There are still stories that I haven't heard and never will, proms, graduations, and senior speeches that he will miss. So on April 14th of this year, I realized thinking about giving a chapel talk without him sitting front row where he was supposed to be was a reality I did not and still do not want to accept. But on April 14th, I also realized that sharing my voice in front of an audience, something that he dedicated his life to doing, is the closest I will ever feel to him. He was my mentor, best friend, role model, and grandfather all in one. Whether it's writing stories on the mafia, speaking with presidents, or interviewing citizens in the midst of dangerous protests, my grandfather taught me the importance of sharing your story to anyone who will listen. So here is my Brooks story. When I lost my grandfather my sophomore year, everything seemed to fall apart. My grades began to drop, I distanced myself from friends and family, and Brooks no longer brought me joy. An adult at Brooks noticed how upset I was and suggested I create a bucket list of all the things I'm looking forward to in the next two years of my life. The list goes as follows. Number one, make a varsity sport. This in fact did not happen. In middle school, soccer was a key part of who I was. I imagined myself playing varsity soccer as a freshman and continuing on the team throughout my four years at Brooks. Freshman year tryouts came and went, and I did not even step on the field to try out. Sophomore year rolls around and I still could not work up the courage to try out. Junior year, I made the decision that senior year would be the best time for me to try unable to predict that I would not be on campus my senior fall. Although not the most inspirational story, what came from avoiding my shot at varsity was a simple email that kept me at Brooks School. Since I was a freshman, girls JV soccer felt like a home to me. Some girls were there to work up to varsity, some played a few times in middle school and wanted to try it out, and some just needed an afternoon activity. The variety of levels created a playful and comforting atmosphere where we could all enjoy the sport without too much pressure. The coaches, Mr. Nasa and Ms. Nasser, also became mentors to me and many girls on the team as the majority of the practices consisted of talking about our days and problems during the warm-ups. In September of my junior year, I was thinking of making a change in schools. I was very unhappy and Mr. Nasa overheard me talking about how I was struggling in practice. Later that night, I received an email from him that goes as follows. 
You have qualities in you that make you special. People see in you character, integrity, and traits that they want to have for themselves. For some, that makes them happy to be around you. But for others, unfortunately, they will try to always belittle them or make you feel as those traits and qualities are not significant. But I can tell you right now that they are. Those few sentences, along with many others in that email, brought me and my entire family to tears. It exemplified all of the many reasons I chose Brooks, the loving community, relationships with teachers, and the consistent support you receive from everybody around you. I don't think I ever told Mr. Nasa the strong impact his email had, but I fully believe without it, I would be in a very different place. Number two on the list, get a 100% on one of Mr. Nam's math tests. My sophomore year self wrote this goal down while in Mr. Burbank's Honors Algebra 2 class. While the class was rigorous, I had no idea what a challenging class was like until I took Mr. Nam's Honors Advanced Precalculus. We had weekly tests that took place every Monday, and I would spend my entire Sunday studying for them to try and reach that 100%. For the first half of the year, I continuously received 60s or 70s, and that was with a very, very strong curve. I stayed after class many days to ask if I should drop the class, and every time he told me to stick it out. I stuck it out, and I can confidently say that I never received 100% on any of his tests, but I did gain the appreciation for getting problems wrong. Each failed test was no longer just a 60%, but an opportunity to sit down and learn the other 40% that I got wrong. This mindset change helped me to become not just a better student, but a better friend, daughter, leader, and person. My worth was not controlled by a perfect math score because I'm in no way perfect. I fail a lot, but each failure has transformed into an opportunity to learn. Number three on the list, go to an Ivy League school. This has been a goal of mine since I was in fifth grade. I told anyone who would listen that I was gonna go to Phillips Academy, then Harvard University. I in fact did not get into Phillips Academy and decided my prob probability of getting into Harvard was not worth the hours I would spend on writing their supplemental essays. I applied to a few other Ivies, got denied at each one. I submitted my Colgate application approximately 14 minutes before the deadline and made my decision to attend a few days after touring. Everything was last minute unplanned and based on gut feelings. My fifth grade self would not have been pleased. But I believe the biggest lesson that comes with growing up is you cannot plan one second into the future. I'm not a four year varsity athlete, a top scoring math student or attending Harvard University, but instead a three year JV athlete with amazing relationships, the ability to fail and appreciate the present moment. Each of the goals written on the list led me down a path with unprecedented twists and turns and destinations that were different than my sophomore year self believed, but just as beautiful. So I encourage you to write goals that you very well know you might not accomplish, follow the path in which they lead, and appreciate every second of your journey along the way. Observe the lessons in which your failures or su successes bring and discover destinations that you never thought you would end at. Thank you.